All right. We've got Algebra 2 Lecture 4, 14 and 415, OISA 2 and 1, 3. The student will find the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. And that's what we're going to do, so here we go. Let's take a look at what it says. Note, the determinant of a if the determinant of a matrix is 0, then the matrix has no inverse. Now we're going to use the inverse of a matrix to solve matrix equations later, and we're, what we're going to do now is figure out how to find the inverse of a matrix. Uh, here we go. Let's take a look at it. This basically tells us how to do it. To find the inverse of a square matrix, and we're just talking about 2 by 2s for today, uh, let's let A equal this 2 by 2 matrix. A, B, C, D could be any real numbers, and what we're going to do to find the inverse of matrix A, we're going to say then that if this is A, then the inverse of A, that's how we read this, A with a, a superscript negative 1, the inverse of matrix A is 1 over the determinant, so we're going to find the determinant, flip it over, 1 over the determinant, times this matrix, when we do a little bit of rearranging, we're going to switch these two and change the sign of these two. If they're both negative, they'll become positive. If one's negative and one's positive, it'll become positive and negative. So we're going to switch whatever these two signs are, we're going to switch them and switch the position of these two. So we'll find the determinant, put a 1 over it, and multiply it by this matrix after we move these, switch these, and change the sign of these. Okay. So here we go, let's do one. See what it looks like. Find the inverse of this matrix if it exists. So remember, it won't exist if the determinant of the matrix is zero. So if I find the determinant to be zero, I'll just stop and say that there is no inverse. Okay? We call that singular. It's a singular matrix. It doesn't have an inverse. So let's see if we can find the inverse of this puppy. I'm going to find the determinant real quick. This will give me zero. I'm going to write a minus sign. This will give me 81. So my determinant is negative 81. And we'll call this matrix A. Then we're looking for the inverse of this. So I'll say, well, if if this is the case, if A is this matrix, then the, deter the inverse of A is 1 over the determinant, 1 over negative 81, times this matrix. I'm going to switch these two, so there's negative 3 and 0, and change the sign of these two. They're both positive. So they'll both become negative. If they were both negative, they would become positive. If one of them was negative and the other one was positive, the signs would switch. Okay, so what I just did was this. That's what this says. 1 over the determinant times this matrix that's been rearranged a little bit. These two switch positions. These two have their signs changed. So that's what I did. These two switched positions. And these two had their signs changed. And now I'm going to use scalar multiplication, which we just did earlier, and multiply every element of this matrix by 1 over the determinant, and that will give me the inverse of this matrix. So here we go. Uh, negative 1 over 81 times negative 3 is going to be positive 3 over 81. And I'll reduce that here in just a second. And I've got negative 1 over 81 times negative 9, so that would be positive 9 over 81. And we'll reduce that here in just a second. Then I take 1 over the determinant, multiply it by this element. Again, it's negative 9 times negative 1 over 81. And that will give us positive 9 over 81, which we'll reduce here in just a second. And our last element will be negative 1 over 81 times 0, which of course is 0. And we'll go ahead and simplify this just by reducing these fractions and then hope I haven't made any arithmetic mistakes. Let's have a look. If I divide top and bottom of this one by 3, that'll give me 1 over 27. 
Oops. Probably going to need a little bit more room than I gave myself. 1 over 27. Divide top and bottom by 9 will give me 1 over 9. Divide top and bottom by 9 will give me 1 over 9. And this one won't reduce. 0, of course, is just 0. And providing I haven't made any arithmetic mistakes, if this is matrix A, we just found the inverse of matrix A to be this right here. We found the determinant of matrix A, and then we multiplied the inverse of that determinant by matrix A with a little bit of movement. We switch, switch things around a little bit. We switch these two, and we change the sign of these two. We perform scalar multiplication, and we reduced. And hopefully, I haven't made any mistakes. I'll check the answer and see if I got it right. Make sure that's the right problem. 1 over 27, 1 ninth, 1 ninth, 0. Yay! So that's how we do it. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's take a look at another one real quick. And then we'll be finished. Looking at this one, we'll call this matrix A again. The first thing we want to do is find the determinant. So I'm going to multiply these two together. That will give me 0. I write a minus sign. Multiply these two together. That will give me 0. 0 minus 0 is 0, so my determinant is 0. Now, what that said up above was that if the determinant is 0, then the matrix has no inverse. Note, if the determinant of a matrix is 0, then the matrix has no inverse. It's said to be singular. So this is a singular matrix because we took, we found the determinant to be 0, and therefore we cannot find the inverse of the matrix. Alrighty, and that's what we're doing today. You can do this.